My name's Lindsay Mark and today we're going to take a look at one of the most commonly sighted mammals, the fox. Foxes are found all over the world with 37 different types, but the type of fox that's found in Scotland is a European fox, Vulpes vulpes. The size of territory of a fox can vary dramatically from 25 hectares where there's lots and lots of food to 4,000 hectares in southern uplands when they've got to hunt and really try hard for their food. Males are generally a little bit larger than the females but what's really interesting is a study that found out that the Scottish upland foxes are actually bigger than anywhere else in the UK. Um, 26 pounds they've recorded up there, normally they're around 15 pounds. This is probably due to the long winter nights and the longer time for hunting. The more food they can hunt, the bigger they can get. And also, if you think about it, they might need to be a little bit bigger for warmth up there. And the fact that it has such a diverse diet lends itself well to living in almost every habitat. So you quite often find them in farmland, in woodland, in garden and urban areas, in towns. There's so many different habitats that these creatures can survive and do well in. These are such resourceful and adaptable creatures and we often have such fond memories of them from storybooks as a child as cunning and sly creatures. But what is the fox really like? I've got a taxidermy fox here and um, although it's looking a little bit flat it does let us get very close and just see the real features of the fox. The fox is our only wild member of the dog family. Most people are familiar with its bushy tail, its red coat and its pointy nose here. Foxes have evolved to suit their habitat and are perfectly adapted for their lives. They're superb hunters with a finely tuned set of senses that allow them to catch prey and escape predators. I thought it'd be a good idea to take a closer look at some of these senses. So first, let's take a look at the colour of a fox. It's actually much more camouflaged than you would think. Look at a picture of this fox here and just how well camouflaged it is. The fur is nice and thick which helps keep them warm and it doesn't feel unlike a cat. If we look closer at the eyes you can actually see some cat-like similarities as well. The vertical slits. This controls the amount of light that gets into the eye. In low light conditions, it will widen the pupil of its eye in order to get as much light as possible in there. And in conditions where it's really, really bright, it'll go thinner and a thinner slit. They have fairly good eyesight with some color vision and their eyes are really good at picking out movement, especially silhouettes against the horizon. I think that's why rabbits use a strategy of staying very, very still if a fox is close, just so no movement is detected by the fox. Interestingly, they also have reflective cells at the back of the eye. This layer is called the tapetum lucidium, and this means bright tapestry in Latin. It helps improve the night vision of the fox, and it's often the thing you see when you're out at night and you're shining a torch and you see these reflective lights coming back at you, two little eyes. There's also an interesting study to show that young foxes have a slightly different coloured tapetum than the adults, so more of a yellowy colour in the older foxes and the adults and the younger ones that haven't quite developed that have more of a kind of greeny bluey colour. Look at these ears, they're highly mobile, they can face them in different directions and the sound is caught and funneled down the ear canal there. It helps pinpoint distance so well when, when they can independently move them. Inside the ears are also a little bit hairy there and that's probably so that dirt doesn't get trapped. Their ears are extremely sensitive. Studies show that the frequency of noise they can hear at best is the same as the gnawing and rustling of rodents. Let's look at their legs. They're quite slender and long and they, they stand quite tall. This helps them move quickly and they can jump really high. Not only can the fox jump two metres high, it can run up to 45 miles per hour pretty fast. So I have a fox skull here. 
taking a closer look at skulls really helps us find out the ecology of the animal that we're looking at. So you can see the long nose here and inside the nose cavity there's lots of projections. These are called turbinates and they help with airflow regulation and they increase the lining of the nose which increases the smell. It's said that foxes have a sense of smell a thousand times better than us and a badger may be about 700 to 800 times better than us so it must work quite well. At the roof of the mouth there's a special organ. This is called the Jacob's organ and it picks up the scents and pheromones from other foxes and is used as a communication. So sometimes you'll see foxes breathing in through their mouth and chattering their jaw together and this is them pulling the air over the Jacob's organ so that they can pick up the pheromones of females and things around. Comparing the fox skull to other mammals like this badger here, you can really see the differences outlined. So in a badger you've got this big sagittal crest here for all the muscle attachments to have a very powerful jaw. The jaw is attached on there so it can't do this kind of movement but a fox's jaw isn't attached so it is able to chew a lot better than a badger. Its teeth, had this skull had any, would have big canines much like a dog and the grindy teeth at the back and that shows us some of the food that it likes to eat. You can see that its tooth row is more than half the length of the whole skull there. This helps it be a top predator. It is really designed to eat a whole lot of different foods and it is omnivorous so it will have anything from eggs to beetles to fruit to scavenged food to meat like rabbits that it's caught and that is why it is so good at adapting well to all environments because it can eat whatever it finds. I'm fascinated by the fox's whiskers. Having had cats and dogs over the years, it is similar and they use them in a similar way as well. In low light conditions they're going to be able to feel what's in front of them and feel if they can fit through gaps and fences or into their dens. Looking at the paws of a fox, you can tell it's got the perfect design for some underground life. It's got long sharp claws to be able to dig its den. In between its toe pads here, it's all furry and that helps it be a really silent hunter. If you've ever seen a fox walking, it'll place one foot in front of the other foot very gently, feeling exactly what's underneath it so it's not going to break any sticks so it can hunt efficiently. It's often one of the easiest signs to pick up of a fox is the footprint. So here you can see the four toes of the fox print and quite a small main pad at the back. If you look at these front two toes here you can see that they are a lot further forward than the back two. This gap is a telltale sign of a fox. Now if you look at a dog print here, I have this block of wood to show you, you can see the big main pad is much bigger and it's got its four toes but it's not got that gap that we talked about as well. And something else that you might mix it up with is perhaps a badger but look at those toes again, you've got five main toes in a badger and a big kidney shaped main pad. They live in an underground home called a den and quite often they'll take over rabbit burrows and make them into their underground dens. They don't spend all their time underground. A lot of their time is spent during the day and at night in these nests. These outdoor dens can be found at the base of an old tree, even in a little cave or just a little shelter over their heads. It must be quite cool and a good way to get rid of some of those pesky fleas. Look at this fox here. He's walked right past a badger in its little nest. Foxes have even been found to live 
in harmony alongside badgers in a badger set. Foxes have 28 different sounds in their repertoire. There's a few that you hear more than any other. One is that kind of the male bark. And the other is the female vixen screaming, which is normally heard in the winter time, um, round about the time that they're mating. <coughs> Foxes have another way of communicating and that is through scent glands. So they'll use the scent glands at the base of their tail to help them communicate. So this might be that they are in season or that they're just marking their territories. Foxes also have glands in their jaws and lips and their pads of their feet. And this is why you'll see them maybe rubbing up against something. They'll be leaving their scent marks on it. So. We've got a female fox, which is called a vixen, and a male fox, which is called a dog, and babies, which are called pups. They can be quite territorial, so they often don't live in big family groups. Quite often there's a male with one or two females in his territory, so they mate in that November, December time. Cubs or pups are born in spring, and there's usually four to six on average in the litter. They're born deaf and blind and they stay below the ground for two to three weeks and they start to come out about four weeks from when they're born and they turn from a kind of brownie colour to the more orangey colour that we're used to. By autumn that same year the cubs are ready to survive on their own. Sometimes they stick around to help next year's pups. Both the male and the female raise the pups and both take turns in bringing food. Foxes have always fascinated me, but I only ever see the quickest of glances of them. Shooting past my window, driving past them in my car at night. I've even spotted them from the office window. And I'm determined to make sure that I can get some good sightings of foxes. So we already know that where there's food, there's gonna be foxes, but we've got to know what to look out for first. Some of the field signs. Urban foxes are definitely easier to see. They become accustomed to humans. We know foxes are crepuscular, so they come out mostly dusk till dawn, but you can see them all through the evening and during the day as well. This makes it really hard to just pinpoint when they're going to come out. Um, so I will use a trail camera to just help me out a little bit. So I think we should go out and see if we can work out where my local foxes actually live. I've gone back to where I first spotted the foxes and I've noticed this trail here in the grass. Following it along, I'm looking for evidence And on this wall, there's definitely been something jumping over. And I found some hair here as well. However, I think it's actually cat hair. Hmm, definitely a dead end here. I think we'll keep following the track, see where it takes us. There's a hole into the woods here. And a fence. I found some tracks that could be fox. 
It's quite hard to tell though. But look what else I've found. A kill of some description. So this bird has been killed and it's all been chewed up, quite messy. And if you take a closer look at it, you can see the actual chew marks. So this is telltale that it is a fox indeed. Let's keep looking. Oh, I've got some hairs down here. See how it bends like that? That means it's hollow, so it's a deer here. There's another, another deer here. Just as well we don't have smell of vision because I found this poo and it's definitely fox. We must be on the right track. Interestingly, I found these holes. This could be perfect for a fox to live in. This hole looks really small, probably a rabbit. This hole looks a bit better. I wonder what's been living here. You can see the size of it next to my hand. I think a fox or a badger could probably get in here. Let's look for more evidence. Ah, okay. This does look like a little gingery hair. Doesn't have coarse feel of the badger here. Some more holes. These look ideal. Especially this big one here. I wonder if the fox has its den down here. I think I'm going to set up a trail cam here. It's definitely been badger here, right enough. You can see the black and white hair here. So here's the trail cam I'm going to put out and a great big lock because it's going to be put out in an urban area so I don't want it to go missing and hopefully it'll catch us some good footage. So I've collected it back in. I can't wait to see what's on this. I know that there's 200 and odd clips so I'm going to get it into the computer and see what we can see. So first up is this little wren collecting some nesting material and a grey squirrel and a little mouse. No foxes yet. Spot a black and white face here. I wonder if it's going to go down that hole. Ah! So that's how it's down there. There's some soggy badgers. Oh dear, not good in July. And here that looking. Here we go, a fox sniffing around. Oh, I wonder if it can smell badgers. Hmm, is it going to go down? This would be interesting. I wonder if it's going to live here. Nope. Showing its athletic ability there. So it's still not going into that hole. Very interested. I think we can safely see it. But the foxes here are not using this hole. A little limp there. Now, I'm not going to dishearten. It's a bit of a hobby for me. So I'm going to try one of the other holes I found and put the trail camera up there. And see if I can find out where my local foxes are spending the night. And of course there might be those day nests too. I'll need to start looking more. Foxes have a fairly stable population. The biggest threat to them is, of course, humans, where many are killed on the road and not everyone finds them as endearing as I do, but they have a really important ecological role to play. They help control populations of rodents and rabbits, and they also disperse seeds by eating fruit. I'm sure you'll agree these are fascinating and beautiful creatures. Good luck being your own nature detective and finding tracks and trails of these wonderful foxes.